Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our third example of how to solve a cube resistor problem. In this case, we have the endpoints on the same phase at the bottom of the cube right here. We want to know the equivalent resistance between A and B. This is kind of a different circuit, but again, the technique will be the same. We somehow want to collapse, push a three-dimensional circuit into a two-dimensional circuit by collapsing it according to the symmetry lines. And if you look carefully, you can see that from A to B, you can, it looks exactly the same to the current if you were to take this path from A to B or if you were to take this path from A to B. That would essentially be exactly the same. In all respects, that path looks exactly the same with all the other uh, resistors in the circuit. So what we can do, therefore, is collapse that circuit so that this corner will collapse onto this corner and this corner will collapse onto this corner. So simply make it flat like this. So we put these together so that these resistors will combine together by collapsing it like this. This resistor will collapse onto this resistor. These two resistors will collapse onto these resistors right there. So simply by squishing it into a flat circuit. Let's see what happens when we do that. Collapse onto a flat circuit, you end up with something like this. So this will be the equivalent circuit. We still have the resistor between A and B. But since we collapse this together, we end up with something that looks like this. And like this. Notice that this resistor will still be there unchanged. Like that. This resistor in the back right here will be the sum of these two resistors right here. They will be collapsed onto each other. Those two resistors will be collapsed. And then this one these two will be collapsed like that. So now we have a resistor circuit that looks like that. Now be careful about the values of these resistors. Notice that this resistor did not change. That's still R. The one in the back there has not changed. That still be, will be R. But these two resistors, this one will collapse onto this one. So that's two resistors in parallel. You know, again, the way it looks like is you have the same amount of current going to the same resistor. So you combine them into a single resistor that then will carry twice the current, which therefore has an equivalent of the half the resistance. So this will be R divided by 2, this will be R divided by 2. Notice that this resistor will collapse onto this one, so this will be R divided by 2. These two resistors collapse together, R divided by 2, and those resistors collapse together, and that will be R divided by 2. All right, so that's now our equivalent resistance. Notice that this is relatively easy to solve, because in the back here we have three resistors on a single circuit, and so that's a, what we call a series circuit. We simply have to add those together. So R divided by 2, the R divided by 2 and R, you add all those together, you get 2R. So this resistor circuit will look like this now. So we still have this one. We now have one single equivalent resistance. We have this one right here. We have this one right there. And then this one in between A and B. So this is still A. This is still B. Notice that this is still R. This is still R divided by 2, this is R divided by 2, this is R divided by 2, and this one is the sum of these three combined, that would be 2R. Okay, all right, next you can see that you can then combine these two together, because those are in parallel, and then we use the product over the sum method to find that equivalent resistance. So then we have a resistor circuit that looks like this. Oop, a little shorter, this is still A. This is still B, and these have not changed, so this is R, this is R divided by 2, this is R divided by 2, and this one right here is those two combined, that will be the product over the sum, so let's do the calculation right here, so R parallel is equal to the product, 2R times R divided by 2, divided by the sum, which is 2R plus R divided by 2, the product 2 divided by 2 is, is 1, so this will be r squared divided by 2 plus a half, that's 5 over 2r. This cancels out that, and then divided by fraction, same as multiplying by its inverse, so this will be 2 fifths r for the equivalent resistance. All right, now we have two parallel branches. We have this branch right here, and we have that branch right there, so here we simply have to add those two resistors together. So now we come over here. And we have the resistor between A and B. That one is still 
with a value of R, and then those three resistors combined, since they're in series, we simply have to add them up. So we have R divided by 2 plus R divided by 2, which is 1R, plus 2 fifths R. Well, 1R plus 2 fifths R is equal to 7 fifths R, and that's what this resistance is equal to. And so now we have two resistors that are in parallel, so now we use the equivalent parallel resistance technique. So now we go from A to B. And here we have to solve these in parallel, so resistance in parallel is equal to the product, so 7 over 5R times R divided by the sum, 7 over 5R plus R. So this becomes 7 over 5R Divide, oh, R squared divided by 7 fifths plus 1, that would be 12 fifths R. Notice that that cancels out, the 5's cancel out, and we end up with 7 over 12 R as the equivalent resistance. And so that would be the resistor right here, 7 over 12 R as the equivalent resistance. And again, the technique is very straightforward. You simply realize the symmetry you realize that you can collapse this down like that so that we have a flat circuit rather than a cubic circuit. Notice that wherever the two resistors collapse together, you end up with the equivalent parallel resistance, in this case, R squared divided by 2R, which is R over 2, and you do that for each time two resistors come together, and so that's how you find your equivalent resistance. Pretty slick technique, don't you think? All right.